Welcome back. It's time to add some physics to our game. So we could create a sphere to have an actual ball. Um, I kind of like going retro with it. And I'm going to center this cube. Reset, please. There we go. Um, I'm going to take this cube. And I like to have this pixely old school look uh, in this demo. So I'm going to do this with a cube. I could just as easily come here, 3D object, and you can create a sphere. Okay. And then there's a sphere. And then you can have a ball. Now, notice that the ball has some shading to it because it is a 3D object. Okay. Um, I'm not going to get into that, but you could take that out if you wanted. You could adjust how that object handles light. Okay, so this cube I'm going to rename to ball so that we know it's a ball. And I want this to interact with the world um, of physics. Okay, so for something that you want to be moving, the the, the mo object in motion you want to think about, it, the, the thing in which you're going to apply forces to, not the things in which it's going to bump into and hit, okay? What you need to do is add a component under physics and add a rigid body. Okay? So I'm going to do this as is right now. We've added this and I'm going to hit uh, play. And you watched gravity took hold and it fell. Um, so let's start digging into what's going on here. Okay? First of all, it fell and stopped. Okay, it didn't go through the world. It knew to stop there. All right. So how does it know to stop there? That's what these box colliders are doing. So the wall down here has a box collider. And the ball itself has a box collider. Okay. When these two things collide, they take up physical space and as far as the physics engine is concerned, and they're just going to come and sit and rest, right? Now, we want this to behave like a ball, though. We're actually not stuck with a box collider. I'm actually going to remove this component, okay? If I take away a box collider, it's going to fall right through, right? There's nothing denoting what space it takes up. Okay, so it's going to fall through the world. I'm going to add a component. I'm going to go to our physics, and I'm going to add a sphere collider. Now, if I zoom in on this, you might be able to see this. Uh, let me turn off the mesh renderer, and then you can see that there's a sphere there. Okay, that is the, the green is the collision. A little hard to see when... Um, the, the balls on there in white, but it is there. So now this thing is a, is a ball and it should come. Uh, and again, it just falls and stops. All right. So we've gotten back to where we were. Um, except we're actually circular in our collision. So what that means is the corners can clip. All right. So let's go into the ball here real quick. Let's take this. The Z is our blue axis. So let's rotate this up from the 45 degrees. And we'll drop it again. And now if we go down here, you can see it has clipped into the wall. Right? Because that's where the sphere collider is versus where the actual mesh is. Okay? So if we wanted the edge to hit... um we could have kept the box collider. We want this to behave like a ball, even though it's going to be a square pixel. Uh, we want this to behave like a ball. All right, I'm going to take off the rotation. And I'm going to come up to the ball, and I'm going to move it slightly forward, okay? Just to demonstrate something. So now it's not perfectly in line with the edge. All right, and pull it out far enough. It's 
let's go ahead and let's pull it out 0.5. That should be enough. No, not quite. We have a perfect state. I'm going to pull out 5.1, and this time my point will be made. There we go. Yeah, it just rolled off. Um, that's not something we want to happen. And when you get a lot of physics objects going on, they can bounce in all different directions and things like that. So what we could do is we could say, hey, freeze the rotation in the z-axis, meaning it cannot roll into the screen. Well, it just did. I'm sorry, not the z-axis. You saw when it fell, it rolled along the x-axis. It's rolling into the z. Um, so we want to freeze the rotation on the x-axis. Right? Now it can't roll forward or back. This is the x-axis, right? So now it can't roll in that direction. It can roll in this direction, which we kind of want. It can also roll um, on its face, which we probably don't want it doing that either, right, in this game. So we want to lock it to the z. Um, I'm going to turn these off again and show that we can also freeze the position on the z. So now it's not rolling on the z. It is, maybe it's going to tilt slightly. All right, that can happen. It can tilt. Um, I think if I pull this way out, 0.75, we'll get to see a rotation happen. All right, there we got a rotation happening. The ball is actually spinning. It's keeping an inertia going in the physics engine. Um, but we can't actually go forward because we just locked the position. So this is why we want to lock the Z position and the rotation in both of these so that we get a firm stop. All right. And it's going to behave more um, like it's constraining the pixel. All right. Let me put it back to zero. So that's what these constraints can do. Um, in your collision detection. Now, the other thing to know down here is the collision um, detection mode. So, I'm going to go to Edit, Project Settings, Physics. So right now, um, I thought it was here. It might be hard-coded. All right. Project settings. I don't think there's a different one. Quality. I may be wrong. I've never actually uh, changed it myself. But... Default contact cut off. Okay. So in the physics settings is sort of the world settings for the physics. Um got this very complicated layer matrix. We're not gonna worry about that. Uh, I'm just gonna minimize that up there. Um what we are curious about is this solver iteration count number. So the physics engine, this is where I could be wrong, but I believe is hard coded to run at 30 frames per second. So even though uh, now that I have some stuff going on, it's running at 1,098, and when I hit play, okay, now we're dropping to a more realistic, you know, 70, 80 frames a second for the game. Um, the physics engine runs at a 30 frames per second. So what that means is you could be moving faster then the game is checking for collisions, right? If this ball was falling fast enough, and I'm going to come back and we're going to just crank up project settings, physics. We're going to crank up the uh, gravity by a factor of 100, okay? Get over here and we might see this. We might not. When I run this, Okay, it dropped and hit hard. Add a couple more zeros to that number. Now it's gone. Right? Maybe I didn't need so many zeros. Oh, yeah, I didn't need that many zeros. Okay, 
So it got going so fast here that it's gone. It clipped right through the wall. And what happened is, is the, the, the difference between the frame rate that I'm running at, I'm drawing, let's say 60 frames a second. I'm drawing the game two times. It's going to move everything, but it's only going to recalculate where everything should be moved every other frame, right? So it's going to save us some performance because a physics engine can be computationally expensive. But that came at a cost. Now, let's see if I go to my ball and I can actually address this much gravity. This is a really extreme situation we've got set, but let's see if we can do that. I'm going to change it to a continuous mode. And now it's stopped. Okay. So if I go back to project settings, physics, what kicked in here is this solver iteration count. I'll set this to one. We should go right through again. Nope. Set to zero. No. Oh, it, it can't go lower than that. Okay. Um, can I make you clip through again? Can I break the solver iteration count? Maybe I can't. Okay. I'm going to stop trying to break this right now and just explain what's going on. I'm going to set this back to 9.81 and I'm going to set this back to 6. All right. What this is saying is when we're in the, the continuous mode, okay, or continuous dynamic, um, never really been clear on continuous and continuous dynamic. I'm just going to confess that right now. Um, the documentation, which I can click out to, this is a cool tip right here. You can always click these uh, buttons um in unity will just take you to the documentation immediately and i'll come back to that in a second but continuous and continuous dynamic what they use is they use that solver iteration count to when they run at 30 frames per second so it, when it does run on its frame it breaks up the calculation into six pieces so it does a six of the movement, a six of the movement, a six of the movement, blah, yada, yada, yada. It gets through it six times, but doing a much smaller change, and each one of those checks for collisions. So when we go into continuous mode, we're increasing the CPU load, but for a fast-moving object, like a bullet or something, uh, that could totally be move uh, right through an object, you know, a wall or an enemy, say, in one frame, this will solve that problem for us by actually projecting it and figuring out, is it actually going to hit um, in that one frame? So here I'll, I'll give you the, their definition. Um, use discrete collision against dynamic colliders with a rigid body uh, and continuous collision detection against static mesh colliders without a rigid body. Rigid body set to continuous dynamic will use continuous collision detection when testing against this rigid body. Use other rigid bodies will use discrete collision detection used for objects which the continuous dynamic detection needs to collide with. This is a big impact in performance. Leave it to the discrete if you have no options. So that's what I was saying. Hey, um, discrete is your best performance option. Continuous dynamic. Use continuous collision against objects up to continuous and continuous dynamic collision. It will also use continuous collision detection against static mesh colliders without a rigid body. For all other mesh colliders, it uses discrete collision detection. Use for fast moving objects. So that's what I've always took from this is use for fast moving objects. So what it's talking about is with and without um, rigid bodies. So our colliders, right, the box collider here, it doesn't have a rigid body, meaning it cannot move. So it's a, it's a static collider. It cannot move um, in the world. Something that has a rigid body can move. So now that I think everything is set back to normal, Okay, so now I'm going to, um, on this wall, uh, I'm going to add a component, physics, 
a rigid body and I'm going to uncheck gravity, right? So this guy doesn't use gravity, but when the ball runs into him, hey, where, why, why are you using gravity? You use gravity. I said, don't. That's interesting. That should not have happened. Um, I'm, I'm, I am at a loss on that one. Uh, use gravity is not checked. So that's interesting. Hold on one second. Okay, we're back. Um, I know what my error was, uh, and what I did wrong, um, there. Uh, so this, when it was in position at negative 12 here, it is actually our in collision with these other uh, boxes. These are overlapping. So those were pushing it down, not gravity. Um, so I'm going to take it down real quick so you can see that there's a gap now. And this will show my point here. That now that it's a rigid body, it can move. Um, and if I remove that component, if it doesn't have a rigid body, it cannot move. Okay. So that's what's referred to as a static collider. Um, and to the, the point that it was making with, um, the documentation and continuous dynamic, I, it has a lot to do with speed of items and how they react to static versus colliding with other rigid bodies and what colliders they may be using and, and the style and everything. Um, so just it more lower you go, the um, bigger the performance hit, right? So if you have something really fast that you really need to be sure of, like bullets, maybe you're going to continuous dynamic. But essentially, what it was also saying in there is test your game. And if you don't have an issue with speed, then don't up this just to up it you know if, if, if you're not having a collision be missed um then don't worry about it okay the other thing here um is this interpolate setting okay oh i think i unchecked make sure everything is set back And let's just, since we're on documentation, let's just read the interpolate section, right? Okay, so interpolate. Try one of the options if you're seeing jerkiness in your movement. Okay, so this isn't necessarily a collision, discrete, multi-iteration thing. This sort of just smooths things out. So if things are sort of moving jerky, in the game and they're, they're bouncing around. You can go ahead and say, let's smooth things out. Um, and you can smooth it based on the previous frame. So where it was to now, or you can smooth it out based on where it is now and where it's going. Okay. Um, just two different versions of kind of the same algorithm to say, move into place more gently or move out of place uh, more gently are the two options there. Don't really need it right now. We're not that jerky. Okay. So I'm going to leave that alone, but that is another one that uh, you may want to do. Now, is Kinematic, if you check that box, and you may do it by accident sometimes, nothing's happening. So is Kinematic is saying, I want you to treat this as a thing that can be hit by things and, and be impacted and cause movements and forces. But I don't want you to move it yourself. I will do the moving uh, through code and through script. Okay. I'm going to take that off. There you go. It, it falls. So if you, if you have rigid body and nothing's happening, you may have is kinematic checked. Um, and that is what it, and of course we have, uh, drag and mass coefficients for, um, when two objects collide, what has better mass and you can manipulate all that through there. All right. So what we're not doing is bouncing. 
or just coming to a rest and stopping. So to end this video of physics, let's create some bounce action. Okay. So I'm going to create under your create menu, a physic material. I don't know why it's not a physics material. It's a physic material. Uh, and I'm going to call it bouncing. And this has some properties, such as how much dynamic friction and static friction is applied. I'm going to wipe out those and set the bounciness to pure bounciness. Okay. And when it collides with another object, right? I'm going to set it to take the minimum amount of friction from the other between the two and take the maximum amount of bounce. All right. I'm going to go to my ball. This physic material that we just made gets applied to colliders. Okay. So see, there's none right now. Now in Unity, I can click and drag this into that slot. Right. Now I have bouncy set. Or you can click these little radio buttons and then it'll go to your scene. And anything you have that you can select, uh, it will be listed there. And notice it bounces right up about to where it came to. Okay. Let's go to the material real quick. And what we're going to do is we're going to set these to average. Right? Where they were at the default. Now it sort of bounces and stops. Okay. So why did that happen? Well... We haven't set a physic material on the things that it is colliding with, right? And since we haven't set it, it's taking the default. And I don't know if um, we can go to product settings, physics. Um, I don't actually see a way to edit these defaults. But you basically, the default bounce material... You can see what the default material is by creating a physic material. Uh, I'll name it default and make no changes. Um, you can see it has a 0 0.6, 0 0.6, zeros, and everything is set to average. Okay? So that is the material in which it's hitting against. Right? And since we've set this to average, what we're getting is the 0.6 is averaged against um, our 0 and 1. And no bounciness over here. So, we could solve this another way. We could also go to, make sure I get the right wall, cube one. We could also go to cube one and give it a bouncy material. Okay? And now if I run it, there you go. It's coming roughly about. Now I'm going to try to get the cursor right there. And watch over time. I'm not moving the cursor now. It's slowly bouncing higher and higher. Okay. So remember the physics engine is running at a lower frame rate than the game. And we're also moving more frames than we're calculating the effect of gravity, essentially, in the game, okay? Eventually, in this project, we're going to not have gravity on. Gravity is not going to be a, a system that we use. But just know that's where that's coming from, okay? So things aren't perfect. If we come back to our bouncy and we change these to minimum and uh, maximum, I think it'll lessen the effect, but I do not think... Oh, you know what? Let me just go ahead and... Um, yeah, let me hit play. Get down here in time. There we go. Um, I do not think it's going to eliminate the effect. Okay? It's still going up slightly. Not as bad. Right? So, it's a game. It's a physics simulation. It's not real world. There are calculations going on under the hood. And different things at play. 
it's not going to be perfect. I think anyone who's played several games that have really complex physics engines uh, in them have seen all kinds of crazy videos of what happens um, on these edge cases of physics engines and when things get out of control. So we're going to stick within the physics engine because it buys us a lot that we don't have to deal with. We don't have to deal with the impacts. We don't have to deal with um, the uh, velocities. We don't have to deal with the collisions, the street checking and placing it every frame. We get a lot for free. But we are going to have to be aware of some of the limitations uh, of the engine. And we can solve this as well. So... With that, that's sort of a start of physics and collision. Um, and next video, um, we're going to get a little bit into code here and, and handle things explicitly ourselves.